Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to Magdiel Lopez. And you'll see in uh, Photopia, I've already opened up a photograph of myself. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the background. So I'm going to magic wand because um, it's a nice empty background. I can just magic wand it and then I press delete and it all disappears. Okay, um, next thing I need to do is isolate the head and so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool to cut from the nape of my neck following the curve of my chin and then in my case I'm going around the beard as well and rather than try and get every hair I'm trying to follow the form of the beard really so follow the larger areas and the way they curve. And then I'm gonna go across and down and over. Wee and up. Wee. Okay, and we're all good. And we press delete once that's done, and we have now the head on its own. Next thing we're going to do after that is go Image Adjustments Black and White and click OK to turn it black and white and then Image Adjustments Brightness Contrast to bring up the contrast and bring the brightness down a little bit, make it a little bit more dramatic. Click OK. OK, now I'm going to zoom in so I can work more closely and I'm going to grab the Polygonal Lasso tool and I'm going to cut a kind of curved line that's going to cut off the first segment of my face. Um, you might choose to go through your lips or across your chin, um, but because of my beard, I'm going just below the nose so that I'm not cutting across hair. Okay, and then down and around, back to that. And then I'm going to click on the arrow tool and I'm going to move it away from the rest. I'll then press Control C to copy it and Control V to paste it and you can see it turns into a new layer. And I moved it away from the rest so that I could use the polygonal lasso tool on the original layer and just mask around it and then press delete and that gets rid of that bit on the original layer as you can see. Okay. Right, I'm going to grab the polygonal lasso tool again and back on the original layer and then going to cut another curved line through my portrait and this is going through my ear up across my face and then I am going to pay attention to the bridge of my nose and try and make it go around the form of my nose and then back out the other side and then down and around to mask off that bit. Okay, and then the same as last time, I'm gonna grab the arrow tool and again, I'm gonna move that apart before pressing Control C and Control V to have that part on its own layer. And then I'm gonna go back to the original layer, mask around it and press delete and that's going to get rid of that bit on the original layer too. Okay, I'm going to do one last cut. So polygonal lasso tool again. And this time I'm going to cut across my forehead. Obviously you want to try and be as smooth as possible with these. So as you go around a curve, make sure you're clicking the points of the polygonal lasso tool closer together. Okay, and then Again, arrow tool, slide it over and control C, control V to make it onto a new layer. And then polygonal lasso tool again on the original layer, just to cut round and press delete. 
and that gets rid of that bit on the original layer. So you're now left with four different pieces on four different layers, okay? And it's time to start arranging those now into the kind of wonky style that the artist has. Okay. Right, so I'll take the bottom bit. I'm just going to swivel it. Make sure it stays onto the, the canvas. Once I'm happy with it, I'm then going to go to the next layer. And I'm going to spin this one so that the corner of my cheek touches the bottom bit. And this is the joy of the different layers. They allow you to just move things around until you're happy. Once that's done, we'll then go to the next layer. And again, swiveling it and positioning it so that I just touch on one side. And you might find while you're doing this that you run out of space, like I've done. So what you do is you go to image, canvas size, and you just bring up your height. You can do that with pixels, percentage, sizes, it's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. But it just means that I then, on the canvas, have a taller piece of work to work in. Okay. Right, so I'm going to grab that last bit, and same as the others, rotate it until I get what I want. Okay. And these are infinitely movable. You just got to make it exactly how you want it. So you might go back to other layers, but I'm happy now. That looks good. So obviously I have a big canvas now, so I'm just gonna sort that out. So I'm just gonna grab all the layers together and I'm gonna move them with the arrow tool and then crop the image. So I'm gonna get the rectangle select tool, select an area and then image crop. And that's gonna give me the size of image that I want now. Okay, so my piece is nicely in the middle of the piece of work. Okay, I'm now gonna make a new layer, drag that to the bottom and with the polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to start making one of those colored shapes. So I've got to kind of pretend that my head has been sliced. So I'm kind of making a curved shape looking like it's the underside of the slice of that particular slice of my head. So I go from one corner to the other with a curve and then background, and this is obviously going to be behind the faces, so I don't need to worry where it's underneath the face. I can just quickly get back. And making sure I'm on the right layer, I'm going to choose hot pink, and then I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill it. Okay, and I'm going to double click on that layer, and I'm going to use the inner shadow, and make sure that it's on normal and that the opacity is all the way up. I'm then going to make sure the global settings switched off. And I'm gonna bring the distance right up and the size right up. And I'm gonna leave the spread down. And then I'm gonna play with the angle of the shadow until I get something close to what I want. I want the shadow to be strongest where the two segments are meeting and then to slowly peter out as it goes across. But I do want to appreciate that there would be shadow in other places, but it would be strongest in that corner. Okay, this might take some time until you're happy. You need to really play with these. As you can see with this first one, I'm just getting a flavor of what the inner shadow can do if I mess around with the different settings. But in the end, I do find that bringing the spread right down and the distance and the size right up works best. 
but for each one you're going to have to really play with the angle of the shadow to make sure that it is how you want it to be okay so I'm just going to change the angle one more time it's a bit of lag and once I'm happy there I think that's looking pretty good yeah okay right so that's the first segment done I'm then going to make another new layer to make a segment underneath my next section of head and the same as I did before I'm going to grab the polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to make a curve going from one bottom corner to the other thinking about if my head was sliced what that curve would look like what that's underside would look like. Once it's done and I'm going to choose a different colour, red in this case, and I'm going to paint bucket that red in to fill it and then double click on the layer and go to the inner shadow again. And the settings I'm going to keep pretty much the same. I'm just going to change the angle of the shadow to get that where I want it to be so that it looks like the shadow is coming from the corner at its darkest, but then playing along the underside as if the slice is on top of the one below it. And click OK once I'm happy. OK, and then the last segment, same again, new layer, polygonal lasso tool, and go from one corner in a nice curve. Taking your time to get as smooth as curve as possible. Back round to the other corner, and then I'm gonna fill it. This time I'm gonna go for a nice deep orange paint bucket that in, and exactly the same, double click on the layer, inner shadow, and then change the angle of the shadow. I think that's pretty good. No, I don't like that. Go back to as it was. Yep. Gonna keep it like that, I think. Yep. Okay. And that is my image pretty much done. So I'm just gonna zoom out. And I'm just gonna select all the layers so I can use the arrow tool to just quickly shimmy them to a more central position. So I'm happy. Okay. And once I am, I've got one last thing to do and that is to make a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and then go to the paint bucket, choose white, click OK, and then use the paint bucket to fill that layer. And that is the piece done and dusted. I hope you find this tutorial helpful.